by my house every day. Walk by my house every day. Okay. Is it with Vondel or Vondel? Okay. Stephen with a PH. I, I have that Steve. degeneration, so I'm not really learning new people very well. Yep. <laughs> um, one L, you said? Two L's. Two L's. And no H. It's my first name is spelled with a PH. Okay. Not a v. I, I've changed it, and I'll change from this. It's a Dutch name. I think uh, this I went Fondel because, you know. Yeah, the sales. I've had people call me wondering if their sales are done. <laughs> So thanks, Stephen, for joining us again. And then we have Barb doing minutes. <laughs> and Sam. And Dave. And Phoebe. Yeah. Just for making sure that we and get the name face so association. We were technically yeah. guests. Yes. Indeed. So of the three of us on the commission who were able to attend today, <laughs> um, we have some people out ill and otherwise attending to family situations. Um, are you, were you able to review the minutes? And I changed Molly's you, the spelling Molly's name as we went the Y. I changed to added in that to Sam's thing. I didn't see anything else, but someone else can point out because I'm not the best food reader. I didn't see anything else either. Was, I have reviewed in the minutes. And Steve's, Steve's name I also. Changed that. So okay, I changed it. was just the names. Okay. So, um, Seeing no other corrections than name spellings, um, okay. were there any other comments, edits, additions to the February or the March, excuse me, meeting minutes? Is there a motion to approve the March six minutes? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sam. Motion to approve. Second. <laughs> that would be Barb. All in favor. <laughs> Guess vote. <laughs> Guess cannot vote okay. officially. You uh, can I was, at a in. I was at a Camden Can meeting yeah. over there. Yeah. At the Congregation of Church. Mm -hmm. And Allison was there. And she mentioned you needed more members. So last time I came as an observer. And I said, everybody treated me like I was a member. <laughs> so I'm back. And I wouldn't mind becoming a member. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. We have. I do believe we have an open space. I think we have a space. Or do we? So all you need to go to Janice's office, but she's not in today. She's not in today. <laughs> but um, you know, next to Audra's office. And then she you fill out a form that says you're interested in joining. Okay. Then it's the select board group. Okay. What groups there it might be a full online too. Is there? He's he's it's not an online guy. He's gonna head down the hall and grab a form. That's okay. I'm in the radio office because probably can get you. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we can probably out. take care of it in five minutes after the meeting today. So, but yes, we appreciate your interest and time. And anybody who attends, bee has been at the table for the last few years since we no, re reformed, and she's <laughs> committed. She's committed to showing up and doing the work and no, and can't. adding her uh, collective and years of knowledge. And she. Just decided she didn't want the official title, but we it's still because are I just to... am incapable of doing minutes. And I don't <laughs> but even know how to stand up. It's all good. We're it's not fair. It's always good. Yeah. Um, so after the meeting, uh, um, typically get an update from um, the board of select people. I should say the select board. Select and um, so. I tend to not to get too uptight about that, but I want to be sensitive to it going forward. Um, so I spoke with Allison yesterday to get updates so that I could relay them to the group and to have them recorded in the minutes. Um, the first thing she spent time updating me on was um, that she's been she's been at some of the or several of the McGuntacook um, watershed uh, associations meetings and. She sees um, one to recognize that there's been a transition of the a, a, the executive director has um, left, and so they're in the process of hiring a new executive director. They've chosen to uh, at this point in time, or at least this is where they're leaning, to split the position back out into like a field position. Um, Who so is the library? No, no, the McGuntacook Watershed Association. Oh, the West, okay, but... I know there's a lot of McGuntacooks, but this is the Watershed Association and then have a part-time year-round executive director. So they are leaning into that, but 
they see, um, she sees some opportunities uh, uh, somewhat with the work that I do elsewhere, you know, with my, at the district, but um, because of the long-term associations with some of these programs, but there's a lot of opportunity as well with the Conservation Commission to lend some support and, and um, some perhaps uh, areas of expertise or some volunteer time because they're looking at um, the Lake Smart program, which is a essentially what the conservation landscape certification program is in in essence and um to where you help evaluate properties for buffers for you know water mitigation erosion other factors um they are looking at invasives both terrestrial so the things that are impacting the, the land around the watershed but also um you know um the aquatic invasives as well um, so Himalakuli Adelgid, of course, that particular stretch of the watershed has, or even this part of the mid coast has an abundance of hemlock, and um, they're concerned about the potential loss of, of large quantities of hemlock oh, due sure. to the Adelgid, and that would really impact the buffers. So, so I mean, like, talking about the beetles, yeah. yeah, so yeah, a little bit, yeah, and there's a couple different opportunities there, and um, so water quality monitoring um, and some data data management. And again, these might be ways for us to sort of partner, ways to help share our knowledge of like terrestrial invasive plants or to help do surveying. I have a lot of experience with, you know, survey one, two, three, a lot of experience with the GPS and data. And if they're kind of in this regrouping, rebounding stage and phase, um, it might be helpful to, um, you know, it might be nice to be able to support them on, on a particular project or for, you know, a particular effort, you know, a day on the way. So, um, so that was one thing she talked about. Um, another thing that um, she mentioned is there's uh, Curtis Island, and there seems to be, well, as it seemed to be, there is a group um, that kind of came forth through the Historic Resources Committee to uh, address the buildings and just to make sure, and there's a potential need, need for a new seasonal caretaker and, or should they have one, but that there's a lot of activity brewing within some other groups um, regarding, um, regarding how Curtis Island is, you know, managed and, and potential projects and, um, in the, any of the updates to the buildings, it's been suggested that they would, in order to even get materials successfully on and off the island, that even a temporary or permanent, I don't wanna say pier, but like structure to, to move, to move material on and off the island in order to do these repairs would be necessary. And so there's a number of layering effects that, that um, especially being an island and essentially not, access other than you know the seasonality and by boat and it's, it's a barrier island of our harbor etc cetera, etc cetera, that she said you know perhaps there's some space in place for even just a member of the conservation commission to just kind of keep an ear and an eye out on what's going on there and and to see if there's a way for us to um, make sure that the the conservation values are being considered in any and all That's potential right. projects <laughs> On that, so nothing's like specifically happening yet, but there's definitely um, an active group trying to like, and of course, you know, you don't want the island, the, the we don't want the building to fall into a full state of disrepair or anything like. I mean, you know, I get it, but there's a lot of things that would be impacted. It's not just like bring a can of paint down and fix it. This, you know, a lot of other things that are kind of, you know, and, and accessibility is a real issue for obvious reasons and the topography of the island itself. So. So she said, please to keep an eye on that and let's see um, how we can interface with that going forward. Um, and the last thing, no. And this next thing she mentioned was um, Lake Beach and that um, Holly is starting to look at um, the interim director of the Parks and Rec is, as well as Jeremy are starting to look at the shoreline piece um, for solutions um, for accessibility and resiliency. Um, and of course, it's already been mentioned. And so this is a good segue. I'll just do our sort of update now. Um, we've talked about 
the opportunities that Lake Beach has for a uh, public space here in town and that from a conservation value and really from a park, you know, public usage that from Pamela Gleason's and my perspective as landscape designers and, um, you know, people who are looking at space in a more, uh, in a slightly, you know, different way, we thought there was a lot of opportunity to do some best practices with rain gardens, with buffer plantings, with, um, with improved parking situations. And so we had just um, shared that we would be working on uh, pro bono on a concept plan. And we are, we actually have the upper, what we call phase one or the, or the upper portion of the um, park, you know, design um, pretty, pretty much done. Um, she needs to, Pamela is going to render it. And, um, and we, have intentionally done it in that direction because we felt it was the most tangible and had the least amount of hoops to jump through potentially, like like build some what momentum. Section the, 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 the upper portion, the upper portion. So so essentially around the horseshoe, around the parking, up to okay. Bayview is kind of the upper or sort of phase one from our perspective of this concept plan, and then phase two or and what would be you know impacted by um, current already just, you know, um, you know, disrepair, stairs of disrepair and shoreline impacts and permitting and all these other layers that are all require a, a more in-depth look and ADA accessibility, which, you know, is you know all, all of the things you have to do in public spaces that um, with the topography and all the kinds of things that are going on. Um, require, you know, Jeremy and Holly, you know, at least just, you know, we need to have a deeper, bigger, more complex conversation to consider sort of phase two. Um, and is uh, Holly Anderson? Is it Anderson or Edwards? Anderson? Anderson. Yeah. Anderson. yeah. yeah. Okay. There's a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and um, so I actually reached out to Holly and then I bumped into her in the street today. So I left a message and <laughs> then fortuitously I was like, Holly, is that you? Um, so I gave her the name face association and let her know that I was the one that left the rambling message on her voicemail yesterday. <laughs> and, um, and so we've, you know, talked about, you know, getting together and, um, you know, discussing that, that project and then and let her know that we that Brian and I have already done invasive plant mapping on all the other public properties except for the Camden Snow Bowl. They are all mapped. And so any projects and any you know work that they're doing that you know might require some some planning design or some land use changes that you know this would be something to fold into that and we'd be happy to to work with them and and you know kind of lend our skill sets where necessary. So yeah, that was a, a well-received pop up, you know, <laughs> jump on the street, you know. Yeah, she was like, <laughs> like okay. so, so we'll be in touch on that. And the last thing um, that we, that Allison and I talked about to sort of tie up the, the select board update was, um, that uh, there's the harbor resilience study that is um, going on or about to take place, or is you know, and it is uh, just to make sure that we have representation there as well. That it's something that we're included, you know, that the the work that we did with the peer um, is made is, an impact. Is there a specific group doing that yet? Or? Well, it's my understanding was that the harbor committee was going to lean hard in on that, but I would know just that that was the only one that seemed to, I've seen some changes, changes there. So I, I, yeah, and I, again, I, I didn't know, I don't know where the Harbor Reserve Studies actually had in terms of like start middle, like, you know, it was just, so it was just sort of the last minute, I only have two, you know, 30 seconds left and, and to just make sure that we're aware and we um, are able to um, lend some support and expertise um, and an eye on conservation. So that's so, the update for select board. Sorry, I'm going to sneeze, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, so, so for, um, for the Harbor Resilience Study, I guess, I guess, do you mind just clarifying like what we're su supposed to, like how we can help or what we're supposed to do? Just so I, the, un like, the, the feeling is that there'll be a heavy look at infrastructure and man-made manipulated spaces. And I think that the concern is that if the Conservation Commission doesn't play a role, that there may not be enough input on uh, natural shoreline or buffers, revegetation, you know. I think there's just, a lot of some push from the art and some of their I mean, it's a pretty hard, I mean, our harbor is has a pretty hard surface edge, period. I mean, it, that just, it is what it is. Like, yeah. I mean, we can walk around and there's not a lot of soft space there. Yeah. There's not I, a, I, lot of, a lot of push to that group to, um, I've heard in past times, to yeah. do a breakwater. Yeah, oh, yeah. And we should probably discuss, like, is that something that be good for the, for the harbor from a conservation standpoint? Yes, I mean, maybe good for the people who owns there because that's the one's pushing for it. But I'm just wondering. Well, there's a lot of impacts, sort of, could, that could be positive and lots yeah, of ones that could be negative. We should sure. yeah. discuss that ourselves and find some do our own research on. Yeah, like that. yeah. So, so I want to talk about you know the the soft or or the sort of natural shorelines and and mm -hmm. where we can help interface with. Um, Increased vegetation or accessibility, or mm -hmm. what the public spaces could potentially look like with this, you know, thinking about resiliency going forward, or may need to look like in order to um, endure the, the storms that we've been and will continue to get. So, um, sea level rise, all of those things. So, um, yeah, so that was not a lot was said, but just to say, like, yeah. It's it's imminent. It's happening. It's we're going to be about to be happening. Just make sure we don't like get you know get the get a whole plan written and then we kind of back into it to try to like fit you know fit in as it's going. Um, Where is that work happening? Is it happening at the start? It's right. it's about yeah. It, I believe it's going to be driven through or around the harbor committee. That okay. would be a question for Audra. And I'm um, not sure. They seem to, but there was no definitive answer on that. It was oh, I thought it was mostly Jeremy. Or maybe there's just a heavy influence as well. We can ask yeah, we can ask. Jeremy. So the question is find out who is leading the charge. Jeremy. Um, still <laughs> all right. So if Dave comes back, he'll give us a couple of weeks and then him. Nope, it's not. Okay, next. Um, so in terms of trees, Molly um, Hamish, and uh, I touched base with her as well. And uh, she said she had only done just a few little things based on our conversation in March on the um, the brochures that she they presented. She had... Um, and they uh, didn't have any more to, to, to update, but that they were prepared to make the tweaks as um, suggested suggested, and to work with um, Audra, Janice, et cetera, to kind of get these things um, to print more so that we can use them at upcoming outreach events. Oh, but, okay, but yeah, but we, but so that was that. Was that. And then um, Brian and I did do this. I was gonna say, and then you have an update. Okay. So Brian and I got together with the heritage trees map, which is actually has um, three sections. Like there's three, there's supposed to be little walking things. And there's three little loops there for you do. And only one of them is really like, so it's a map with these three possible walk loops. And then they each have numbers on it, but only one loop is noted what the numbers mean. Like this is so go to we did that. We did that walk. Uh, go to go to this address and here and here we'll see this XYZ tree. And so we um we did that one. Then and that took us about an hour and a half so at least Brian and I but I updated the app with all the ones that we could. One tree we couldn't find one tree we know had been knocked down that's the one big beach. Um, and along the way, we were also looking at other trees that are 
I love to meet Wooly of Elgin and mm -hmm. a couple of the trees are like in bad shape. So we were we weren't just it didn't take that long normally to do it, but we were just doing a lot of re noticing and stuff. But did, uh Brian was going to check on if he could get the information for the other couple of books for us to do hopefully this month. And um so we're making this progress. And like I said, I updated the app with it and I made it a new tag in the app. It's called Heritage Tree. So you can look there was no place to put it except in notes, but I think you can search that way and there I can find um where it is. So I was going to check with who's ever updating this thing if they could have that as a possibility about it. Um, it was interesting. So, I mean, some of them, one tree is like this big, it's tiny. It's, it's the striped oak, something like that. It's on a little walkway down to, it's a little path that goes from Bayview Street down to the first town lookout. Oh, yeah. It's interesting tree. There's a bunch of them, but they were small, but then, like a lot of the other ones are like, pretty big. So, um, it was very, it was good to do. It's, um, that's how we were there. So, we're making some progress. With updating that. Excellent. And I don't, who, who do we talk to about updating the app? I mean, we're talking about it here, but there's supposedly somebody does that. There's a third party um, yeah, a, no, a consultant that, that does it. I think what we need to do is make sure that we have enough data, like whatever we need to do with the walking um, map of the trees of Camden that is relevant to update into the tree app. If we can't do it through the app, through the tree app that we have, if there's like something particularly relevant or different that needs to be added that we have, we've kind of exhausted that, make sure we've like done the whole map, so to speak, and then we can present that that data set and then they can they can update it. But we wanna make sure that what we um, request or feed to them is like an, enough. A, enough to like justify like That's an hour of time or, right, right. you know, a couple of hours. If, right. You know, I mean, it's cause it's, Part of their contract or fee for service, so I just want to make sure that we're being mindful of, um, that that we our uh, updates are appropriate and helpful to Dave and and others um, as they manage. So, um, can you give a Stephanie? Can you hear us? Okay, I just want to make sure this whole system's working since I'm not the expert and nobody. The two people that help me are. <laughs> yes, I can hear you just fine. Thank you so much. I just saw your agenda and was like, wow, this actually looks like it's pretty packed. So I'm just here to listen. That's all. <laughs> totally fine. I'm, we're happy to have you, but I, I literally was like, oh no, she's been sitting there. I'm so sorry. And then I was like, I just need to know when it's working. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so we did um, mention the late beach park design update as kind of, kind of looped through with the um, the select board update that Allison had given us. So just to quickly recap, Pamela and I are pro bono doing um, a conceptual design because, you know, it's just a space and place where we can do a lot of best practices. We could have some, some interpretive signage and show showcase um, rain gardens and infiltration ditch trenches and, and um, native plants and pollinators. There's a lot of things that, you know, through conservation, through, you know, informed design and on the public space such as that, that would be uh, kind of a win-win. We manage a lot of stormwater coming off of Bayview and the, the adjacent um, super steep <laughs> and, uh, streets that are, that come off of that um, onto Bayview and then eventually down into the harbor. So, so we've done um, a little uh, concept design for the upper portion around the horseshoe, if you will, addressing the parking and the rain gardens and and um, improving, moving the floating bridge, uh, the floating boat to uh, what we deem as a more tangential space to, to the, the playground. And um, so we'll be presenting that in uh, June. We need a little bit of time and I will not be at the May meeting. So we just want to make sure that we're in a a solid space and that will give us opportunity to speak with Holly and Jeremy about the lower portion and we might be in a you know we may we may or may not have a full concept for the lower portion but we could at least have a clear outline for how that will go forward and so um so we'll be presenting that in uh June okay um, do you know what the stairs gonna be 
Are they doing temporary stair fix? For the I am not sure. I tried to get Jeremy yesterday, but um, silly me, I forgot that there was a so like we'll board meeting. Have Holly and Jeremy at that meeting. I will try to get them both. Yes, or one or both. Yes, but we will definitely between Pamela and I cross paths with both of them. Meet, get some some. Um, Again, even if it's just outlines and rough concepts, you know, in, in place and sort of look at the pros and the cons and the, the hurdles and, you know, the opportunities and the. Is there going to be much open space left with all these gardens? Like, it would be all like... gardens. No, I mean, there's, oh, absolutely. There's green, like lawn space and green space and seating areas. And it's, it's you know, I just think there's a lot of lawn. That, this is my professional and personal you know, opinion, but there's a lot of lawn space on the really steep slopes or coming like directly off of Bayview that um, from a soil and water conservation standpoint, if it was vegetated with deep rooted shrubs and trees, and they could be low enough so people can still have the view of the ocean. Junipers. And could be it could be junipers, it could be, you know, choke berries and choke trees. There's a bunch of stuff that could be in there that's like attractive and good for the birds. And the root system would, you know, Many be trees like three because Beatty likes shade. We shade, love trees. trees. We so definitely that's, that's we'll, you know we are put them in. We want the people to use. Yeah, we'll have to pick them up. Oh, much too hard. <laughs> Why not? Because they fight really hard. <laughs> it's not their well, property. Oh, oh, I hear you. Just wait. Well, and someone who lived, someone lives in the park managed to get the former before they the tree warden to take down a tree just because she just because you didn't like it. She didn't like the beach. <laughs> wait, beach. Yeah, so we were just talking about, yeah, just re reiterated. Um, you know, somebody pays, that was across the street, they pay every year that arborists come over and prune and keep all the trees completely pruned so they don't get any bigger than they are right now. They're, they're not pruning the underneath part. No, oh, just, just they're, they're just shaping the tree. They're doing, it's a good thing. Yes, it's that. But, but, yeah. they're, but they actually will pay, they're paying to do all of those, and it's expensive because their trees are really high and big. Yeah. But the people across the street pay to have that on the and, oh. and there'd be less storm damage. Right, it's, yeah. it's not a bad That's thing. good. Yeah, it's not yeah. bad. Yeah, so. so. I could pay somebody to cut down my neighbor's huge pine tree that <laughs> drip sap on my car is all <laughs> summer. Well, yeah, that's a little different. <laughs> there's, there's plenty of tree hate to go around. No. So, well, we're going to, so, so that's the, that's the Lake Beach Park update uh, recap, if you will. Oh, oh, Dave, it's got this. Oh, I, got a, I got a Lake Beach update. Okay. We're listening. I got, I went to the tree processor and I have the big discs of the giant tree that fell down. Oh. I got three big discs and I'm letting them dry right now so you can sand them down. We're going to sand them down and oil it so you can be able to like count the rings or put it up on an easel or I don't know, whatever you got to do. Three of them. Okay. Cookies. Yeah. And then I've got a bunch of boards they milled out. So benches. We're going to make benches. So we're going to, I'm going to work on having the benches made up. And then I have some smaller dimensional lumber. What I wanted to do, and I had this idea, I'm going to have them make some frames with the wood and put a picture of the tree inside. I figured we could either raffle them off or give them to somebody or do something like that as part of the, you know, for the, I don't know what we'll do with it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe we can think of something good to do with the raffle. I don't know. I, this is a little, I'm making it up as I go. I wonder how old was it? Can you, can you have you counted on that? I didn't count it because it's kind of rough. It's kind yeah, of, you know, I, I haven't, to be honest with you, I haven't had time to sit down there before. You know, but, but um, you can do with it something interesting. I was going to bring it in today, but I, I ended up with the department of meetings. I figured we could look at it together, but I'll bring it in one of the meetings and we'll go through and kind of, and the thing the guy told me was he had to cut it in a location that was a little bit above like the very bottom. Mm -hmm. So there's like even a couple of rings that aren't like captured in that he said, which I don't think that's possible, but the way the, that's what he told me about. Maybe the whole page you'd have to know if there's been any update on getting poison poison testing. Not yet. I well they did find it on in the park. Yeah. In the park itself? Yeah oh yeah. Oh yeah they found a lot of it in the park. Okay, that's me. 
Oh, you didn't know about that? I mean, it's not a beach. Oh, well, um, it was all on the property. It was in various locations on the property because they did borings. Okay. And now they're going to do some kind of legal. Probably follow the ledge. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's it's very water, water transmissible, I mm -hmm. guess. And so you're right, it kind of moved down and followed the ledge and it was coming out of the, the poor yeah. barrier, they said, and then it was in the ground and then they're retesting it over by where um, the people's house trees were actually closing. They're wondering if it's still there and we still migrate. Yeah. Oh, is that the source? Like, yeah, like yeah. they may not have gotten all of it. Okay. So it's still maybe reaching over to the park. That's the top. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so that's fine. Well, that's so. But are there any other street tree inventory, stormwater scenarios, any public works? Um, so updates? Samantha, yeah. I thought we had given her everything, but apparently, I think one of the forms that got signed by oh, the trees, yeah, got got sent to Jan. It was a long form, that's what happened. Yeah, she got a harbor form and not the tree, tree, tree city proclamation. Yeah, so I just sent that to Audra to be re signed. Okay. And um, I still have to do the um, tree Ar Ar Arbor Day proclamation or the Arbor Day celebration. So we probably should pick up a, a day. I think it was in May 20th or around the actual time last year. I thought we, no, we picked the date. It's the last Friday of April. Is um, Samantha's already got that date in. Okay. So well, I April 26th, I... it's Harbor Day in Camden. What is it? April 26th, it's Friday. Okay, so April 26th. That's a little earlier than last year, but that's okay. 26th, Harbor yeah. Day. Well, look, reasons here or there, I don't know if that's, if that's the date. So we have a select board meeting before that. So that would be my. Oh, okay. Uh, so I should. So this is one of the So this should be one of sixteen. Right, because that would be give me time to have them do yes. the proclamation. Mm -hmm. Hey, weekly on Tuesdays. Yes, five thirty formally. Mm -hmm. But occasionally there's a lunch, but there's a second one. There's a Wednesday. But it's usually like every other Tuesday. So there is a six. Did you? I didn't check. So. Is it normally six thirty or normally five thirty? Six. Yeah, it's five thirty. That's made because of the select board. Sixteenth, you said. Six thirty on the sixteenth. Okay, so I got time. Okay. I'll have that. I'll do that, and then they'll say this is going to be Arbor Day. And did we pick a location? I we, don't. We, you had said we like beach, mm -hmm. but is there anything we could plant on there? Fit into the. Could plant a baby sequoia. The other. <laughs> Yeah, the guy up Rockville, yeah. he has his backyard full of baby sequoias yeah, to give away to people. Yeah. He's yeah. trying to get them out. Well, I don't know if that's the tree I would think about. <laughs> well, let's, let's think about it. <laughs> oh, Dave, yeah. this, we're going to be planting at the public land, but I don't think we but definitely won't be by April. I don't think that's a good spot either. I mean, you want to play it. You want to have a. Last year it was on. It was like yeah, yeah, it was such a perfect right? spot for yeah. that project. And like it was, yeah, it was just kind of a nice, like. Uh, what about, is there anything to do with the middle school? There's so many trees over there. The new one they just planted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I needed one more. To I'm just looking right. for a public spot. Is there any visible, like visible spot from that received storm damage where maybe we would want to, I don't know, plant a tree and uh, I get washed away again. Yeah. Well, that's the part. <laughs> well, just driving down Route One, which I think is your exposure thing, you might see a place that really needed. One. Any chance we could get like a red maple planted mm -hmm. at? I don't think I have one. You don't think you have one for I, I have think, one already. You think you have it? I was thinking at um, Bar, uh, Barrett's Cove. It would be great to get something to soak up some of that water and establish another like 
shady spot to tuck into. The Willis oh, stuck, stuck the Barons, the, the what at Barrett's Barons. Co. Did I say Barrons? But, but oh, yeah, Barons. Barons. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so you know that the grassy area, and you know it's, it's so wet. There's always a night. It's always so wet, and there's it's you know having spent all my summers on a you know similar location. You know it's it's just nice to have that like tree to tuck Maybe under. More shade right? there. Uh, yeah, I would. I people, would think so. I think I would think people would be. Sometimes. Yeah, I would think it would be a yeah. welcome. I mean, it would. We'd yes. have to cage it for a few years, but I don't know. That was just an idea. Yeah. Yeah. And they need a sure tail points if they have a new side buck going up. There. I feel like a sure tail point has a whole project that's of maybe I wish I was still with blueberries. Them. It was people used to pick the blueberries there. They took them all out. Why well, above above the big rocks, inside the big rocks. That was all unless blueberries. we did something like a smaller, you know, some, some trees that were up. So I'm closer to the road. Um, I would just say anything on that lower section of shirt tail. I view as a lot of opportunity and a lot of need for potential shape shift, like putting a tree in there. To, I don't know where. I also made the last one on Pearl Street. Oh, you did. Yeah. I mean, okay. Well, I mean, we see have... if they mind if we all just stand out there and I, so how about I check the tree there? and say no? Oh, <laughs> it's okay. I mean, part of the my concern is that I got to check the parks and rec. That's not mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like one red maple or wouldn't be controversial. But you know, you know? it's the label on you, you know. Well, mean, that's why I say it needs a yeah. it needs a good and gauge. The wire. weed whacker might. <laughs> Ring. <laughs> you had all the work done on Hill Street, so it sort of it, it was celebrated. Okay. Right, because we're we're getting ready to we're getting ready to finish Pearl Street up with the loaming and the trees. We're gonna be planting trees, but I do have somebody that's been asking specifically for a tree over there. So it might be that's small. that's fine. That's I mean, a, you already okay. have a little involved here. Yeah. So maybe we could do that. And what then number it, Jim? Uh, what number pearl? I don't, I don't yeah, have it off no. of my head, but I have it written down in the office. I know that it's one of the things that we need to do, and I kill two birds with one stone. Abs no, absolutely. That yeah. that's also a good. That's an easy access spot. You just yeah. need to be able to do that. Cool. Um. So we don't have. Um. It's sort of on the agenda lower, but it's also relevant to the public works update. Is the um. Stormwater app training. Um, we've gotten a couple of dates, one of which is the um, the solar eclipse day. So I think collectively we've all kind of politely declined. <laughs> um, and uh, my schedule's a little full, but I would prefer if we just kind of, you know, if two or more people can work with Allison on this stormwater app training, um, you know, or it becomes two different days of you know two or three of us and two or three of us like let's keep yeah. it moving forward um and because i feel like we've just gotten so much water so much so, information if we could start out this spring early summer and get a good season in what would it be she suggested she suggested the eighth and the ninth well april i could do nine i think i'm gonna do it the ninth is, um, Are there some priority areas from your perspective that we should be focusing on once we well, get our I was thinking, rust I was thinking off. about this and I was gonna talk with you. I haven't talked with also with this piece yet, but um, so we have we have this I and I problem, influent infiltration problem with the sewer system. And it's like basically all of the old sewer lines are leaking. And letting groundwater into the whole system, and basically we're 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 treating two thirds groundwater Ooh. at the treatment plant. So only a third of it is treatable; the rest of it's groundwater. So it's a big waste of money, and then you end up with sanitary sewer overflows because you have so much water in the system when it rains. So mm -hmm. when it doesn't get treated at all, it goes in the ocean. So part of we are we're, we're, we're under an administrative consent agreement with DEP to fix this. And that's what that bond was last night. And what what we're finding is, and I've only been involved in this for maybe four months, so, but the problem is the same everywhere. And what, what the investigation has been finding is what they do is they'll, they'll, they'll do various things, they'll smoke tests, they'll flood a camera, 
through the line and what we see when it's raining, we see where the water is coming in from. Is it coming through a crack in the pipe? Is it coming through uh, a connection into the main? Is it coming from someone's lateral from their from their home and we go through the lateral? Is it because it's a cellar drain? There's all of these contributing sources of this groundwater. And part of the problem we we in the town has paid a huge amount of money for studies and for camera work and Hard map is an example. So they've done this on hard map. They cameraed the whole system and they really didn't find any breaks in the line or any direct ties into the main. But then when it rains, the whole pipe is filled with water. So they can't really figure out where all this water is coming from, right? And, and no, or, it's not about that. well, but I mean, why is it in the sewer? It shouldn't be getting into the sewer. And if it is, you've got to find where it is and seal it so the water can't get in the sewer. So I guess where I'm going with all this is the, the app is tied into kind of the stormwater piece, but it also is the soil piece too. And um, I didn't know if the Conservation Commission would want, so one of the best ways to figure this stuff out is to go out with draining yes. and pop covers and look and say, all right, a little bit of flow, a little bit of flow, a lot of flow, you know what I mean? And then you're like, all right, it's somewhere between here and here. And just that amount of like investigative work could be helpful mm -hmm. in certain areas because they haven't been able to figure it out. Okay. We need to pop one of those covers. Well, we, have, we have a, There's a, yeah, yeah there's a special tool. tool. And we would have people there. But what I was thinking was is that we could have like, we could, we could do like something, like we could take hard nap, for example, we'll just use hard nap. And mm -hmm. um, we'll go there on a rainy day, we put a raincoat on, we'll go out, we have some of the people from public works with us help pull the covers and we just start documenting visibly where's the flow start picking up and where's it start leaving off. Because then that isolates the, the area that we need to investigate further. And we don't, you know, we can actually figure out what's kind of going on at that point because they haven't been able to figure anything. And we need like almost like a fresh set of eyes on it. Mm -hmm. um, it's like really fun to get some high school kids to come. Well, I, I think if anything, it would be a good it would be good press because yeah, it, it's, it's exciting. It's talking about you know the conservation commission helping solve a major problem, major environmental problem that we have right now, mm -hmm. which is this this you know uh, sewage going into the ocean. Because of this sanitary sore overflow. And we have an administrative consent agreement with the DEP that says we have to do it. But my but my frustration is, is they spent a lot of money trying to figure this all out and they haven't been able to figure it out. Yeah. And it's coming from somewhere. And 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 there's gonna be hundreds of locations where you're gonna find big and small problems. But I think it'd be exciting that if we could. Do this as a group and find a big problem and then make you know to fix it and it'd be a good story to tell it'll be helpful yeah because the wastewater people are trying really hard but you know it's like driving the jack in and you have a passenger in the car and, and they're not paying attention on how to get there you know after a while you're like you know it all just looks like a bunch of trees yeah, <laughs> yeah right and you're like hey you <laughs> want to drive back you're like oh, i just want to get back you know what i mean it's almost like that's what's going on they've been looking at it for so long they can't see the problem anymore yeah. Um, well, to definitively find out it'd be an awful project. You shut everybody's water off, go down to the bottom of the hill with dyed water and force it back up through and see where it comes out. It can't be, it, it's, it's not that easy. It, it, if it was easy, it would have been fixed by now. It's, it's what it is, is it's depth 5,000 cuts. There's all of these different spots where it's coming in from. And we just have to try to pick away each piece. So you know where they were, where they were when the dye started popping up out of the ground. Yeah, but the dye, the dye doesn't tell you the dye. It's it's not a dye thing. I mean, we've done dye testing, and when you have groundwater infiltration, inflow we can find with dye. In, so inflow is when you have like a catch basin, and water's going in from the road, and it's tied into the sewer line. It's not supposed to be the sewer line. It's supposed to be in the stormwater line. But years ago, they used to tie it all into the sewer line. Some of those never got separated. So we found one of those on Pearl Street. It was actually right at the bottom, right at the corner, right where you, right where, right where you live, actually, right on that corner. Mm -hmm. that, that catch basin, we must have looked at that a thousand times, right? 
and we smoke tested, we did all kinds of stuff. We we didn't know where we didn't realize it was connected in the sewer. When we dug it all up, it was connected. So all the water was running down Pearl Street, getting to the corner, going in the catch basin, and going into the sewer. But we but we never knew it. We never knew it until we dug it up and we die tested. We did all kinds of stuff. It's not as easy to think. I mean, we, you know, I I personally looked at that with Rick Seidel, who's been here for 40 something years, and he didn't know that. You know, it's just it's you gotta you gotta get fresh eyes on it. Some people are gonna see something that other people aren't gonna see. And it'll be helpful, I think. Um, I wonder if it's all consistent or if it sometimes changes. It's, it's coming from we somewhere. won't know until we look, right? It is so dynamic. It can yeah. be the ocean influencing it. It yeah. can be the amount of water coming in. It could be someone pumping it from the basement. Mm -hmm. It could be a catch basin. It could be, but it would be something. We could do a project like this. Yeah. If you guys are interested in doing it, I'd love to see I, that. I have the thought about it, about bringing it up, but I think it would be kind of a neat thing, even if we don't find anything, it'd be a good thing to talk have about. Have everybody out there getting wet rain, rain coats. Rain coats. Yeah, yeah. Out them, but, yeah. And I have some big kids, too. So big. I have big kids at the treatment plant. <laughs> what? No, it's just that on public record. Water yeah. is really Let it nice. be known. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have some students, too, but I, I mean... Yeah, we got some really good people at the treatment plant. They, they, you know, we'll have them do the heavy lifting, the man hookup. But you know, just, just, you know, looking at it and and saying, all right, I check this one. Looks about like half a pipe. I'm gonna go to the next one. Oh, it's a quarter of a pipe. Well, there must be something going on in between the two. You right. know what I mean? Is there training that's necessary? Because like I'm like, well, I'm willing, but I don't have any clue what I'm looking for. You're, it's it's low. It's as simple Trickle. as you're going to look oh down, God, it's look down the hole, and then the pipe is going to there's a notch out of the pipe. You can see the water going by. Huh. And if you look at, if you're on the street and you're, this is one of the manholes, and you look at this one, yeah. and it's and the pipe is almost full, uh -huh. and then you go to this one and it's half full, something's happening between there. And the oh, okay. Thing. And you have radios and people reporting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, to the same central. Okay, yeah. now this oh, one. Oh, he's going to have a whole little thing communication <laughs> station. We, we, we could have walk and talkies and everything, whatever you guys want. If, if, that, if that sells the deal, then we'll give you walk and talkies. But I think it'd be kind of neat. It'd be great to be able to find a problem and then fix it and document it all and they put the paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That That's something you're good. interested in doing. Okay. You have to be prepared to fail, yeah. too. You might look at it and not find anything. <laughs> Yeah, but that but that's information. You so, know, exactly. then, then you know, right, you know this is not the spot. Keep right. you know. Like. So so the C Street sewer shed, each sewer shed area goes to one pump station. Ah, okay, yep. So one of the C Street pump station has high frequencies of overflow. So that means that water is getting into that system and we don't know where it is. And we just cameraed a whole bunch of we didn't find anything. Eatonsfield. Uh, Eatonsfield. Eatonsfield. That used to be a swamp, and it's right next yeah, to C Street. I know we're talking about. We thought it was there too, and and we cameraed it. But there's nothing like looking at something when it's raining. Hmm. That's the time. Oh, yeah. Okay. And a lot of people don't like doing that. I don't like doing that. Right. Yeah, that sounds fine. I'm not. All right. So I'll. I'll plan something out. We'll pick an area and we'll go out on a nice rainy day. Do it. And it's just a matter of being able to detect the difference between how much is in the pipe as you work your way up. Um. And then if we see something, we'll have a camera there. And they'll put the camera in the line and we'll be able to look at it and you'll be able to see the water coming into the pipe. And if that's like a smoking gun once you find it. Next Thursday and Friday, we're supposed to be rain then also the next couple days but that's the snow so i won't yeah <laughs> so she's like we, we, we've got, <laughs> we have a little bit going on um for the next so so the the, the night the night we we're doing baby street oh. we're doing a big job on baby street so it'll have to be after that well thursday the 11th and friday the 12th there's eight weeks of chance break. yeah Oh, the, no, excuse me. Do you want me to just keep an eye on the weather and if I can say this half an inch break? So this it's definitely not rain those days. Because I have to get have, the time will have to be during the day when the, when the staff is here so that we can coordinate sure. it. And I'll let you know where the okay. day is. Sounds good. I'll do it. All right. 
Um, any other public works updates? It sounds like we got a good okay, has about Ms. Glenn for that for reasons. Oh, a word. A word. Okay. Good. Yeah, we should have them this week. Uh, well, probably next week. Are week. you ahead of the public works? Uh, well, last time you asked for anything at the meeting. <laughs> you can't ask for anything at the meeting. <laughs> What you can mention what it after. Right? The last time they paved Washington Street, Washington. They, yeah. they're coming about this far from the top of the curve. That's the same road. I know. I, I asked them. I said, you guys are going to cover this curve. What? And people park in front of my house, back onto my lawn, because they don't sense that the curve's there. I've got, I've got an update for you. So last night during the lawn, presenting a lawn, that's one of the streets that we would uh, Washington Street, yeah, right across from the bullet mills. Yeah, yeah, whereabouts on Washington Street? Two doors up from the fire station. Um, there's like that much curb left on um, the right side going up there. Yep, yeah, where the giant tree used to be. Yeah, right. where Jane Hart's giant tree used to yeah. be. I'll have to look at it. Yeah, that's. Well, I have to go out there every once in a while and say, would you please not park on my lawn? If there was a nice... There's, there's no sidewalk on that side. No. Yeah. You know, you can get There's three parking spots there. Yeah. And the, it's usually the one in the middle. There'll you know, be two cars at either end, and then they'll try to back in, parallel park, and they'll go right over my lawn so they don't sense it. What's that? <laughs> well, it's not my land. It's public land. Oh. That won't stop our actual. <laughs> um, oh, I'd have to look at it. Yeah, I mean, I went to the mall with them. I mean, one of those mallers, like a little bit this big around, it's it stand up, you can scroll into the ground. Oh, okay, I'm allowed to do that. Yeah, if it's a problem. Right like there. they put in for snow protectors? Well, like when you go to the hospital, you see those things in the middle island. Mm -hmm. like, they look like a little ball. Yeah. Yeah, well, this could be any place within the length of a car. Yeah, that they can back in over. They have a spring on them. Oh, okay. Giant rocks all along. Well, I'd love to. There's lots of things I'd love to do, but I don't dare to do because it's public property. Mm -hmm. I'll look at it. Maybe we can just pop it up. And, depends on how it's set in there. Well, it's just been buried over the years. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's not as easy as the pavement's up to it and everything. You I just thought you could. Like they did on uh, Central Street for. Uh, uh, you'd have to take it out and put 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 them on uh, two by fours and form local building with that and then well, set it in. Well, right. Sure, it'd be nice. <laughs> Duly <laughs> noted. <laughs> um, so I'm going to move on to the so website. Sorry. Yeah, right. the, the signs are ordered for um, all the stream crossings and um, the watershed district or the. Brooks, that right? Is that what you were saying? The watershed signs? Or yeah, the watershed. The watershed. It says uh, entering the Goose River. The Goose River. Or the Goose River. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Sam, do you have any uh, content or website updates at this point? Um. Yeah. So I have reached out to um, Janice to try to see what her preference is for um, how she receives updates from us. So that's a motion. Um, I have, I think, a new, like, a new content map. I think we're probably going to do one of the sub menus for now, um, except for one for minutes. But, um, and if the page is too crowded, then we'll explore that option. But it's just kind of chugging along. Yeah. Um, as you think, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, hopefully, I'll have an update about how Janice wants to receive things. Excellent. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, in terms of shoreland zoning improvements, um, uh, we've long since we reformed the Conservation Commission talk that, you know, that was a, a real opportunity. Um, we've met with Jeremy and Shiny in the past to discuss um, sort of gaps in the current um, regs and, and uh, so Shenley and I uh, sort of self-assigned and we met last month. And we're going to meet again next week, I think. Um, but what we're really trying to do is to see um, where we can make improvements to the maps 
So um, right now, only two of the streams or two of the rivers are um, have any extra layer of protection. Um, and then um, looking at different towns performance standards across uh, the state. Um, so you always have to meet the minimum standards, you know, the state standards so the, and nationals, you know, the NERPA, um, but are there ways that we can um, improve through um, the soils, through um, adding uh, additional buffer um, along the perennial streams and, and rivers. Um, and so we're, you know, we're, you know, Jeremy's encouraged us to, you know, not not to plow through it, to be really pragmatic and to make sure that, you know, we dot our I's and cross our T's and that we kind of look at it in a really comprehensive way. So, um, so we've started doing that um, and I will have more updates probably in another month or two because we've just kind of pieced and parsed out um, what, who's going to do what for, for uh, investigation and could um I, I don't know if this is the right place, but I keep repeating if we had an ordinance that required people to put the buffer back after they do some work on on the on the rivers. Ah, yeah. Well theoretically that should be happening. <laughs> well, <laughs> theoretically. Headstrom, unfortunately, is a person who that didn't do it. And there's another place up across from uh, Tree tail. It looks like trees came down or something, and I, I, I have, I don't know how to swim over there and really check it out. But it's, it used to have buffer and now something, and there, there was a lot of work, but on a property there. So I sort of think it might have been on purpose, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, um, you know, so that's a the force. Yeah, I mean, there's 75 feet along the shoreline, and any vegetation, any, any anything like over an inch and a half. There's a certain caliper size, like anything that's removed for construction, be whatever needs to be replaced. There's there are there are rules that are in place, but for the shoreline, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. The the fresh fresh water. Exactly. Yeah. You know. So there's just not enforcement. I think Jeremy or somebody has said, well, if nobody complains, we don't know about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know. that is a complaint based system, but there is a show in the rules. Yeah. So no, there's buffer. definitely a buffer place, the buffer rules that are already existing. Well, so tree canopy, I believe. Yeah. It's like you're supposed to have X amount of tree canopy to protect the shoreline because every raindrop falling. Yeah. It's like a little ball and it hits the dirt right. and it breaks it over. So, so there's nothing to say that there needs to be shrubbery as well. It's more, it, I think it's more about the canopy, trying to protect the, the, the ground from getting I would suggest some, some lower stuff as well because the oh, river yeah. is just charging along there. We need I, a lot of. I don't claim to know everything about it, but there's a formula and, and it's about tree canopy cover and the size okay. of the trees. And, so, I don't think you're supposed to be. I think you can remove things up to a certain size without any problem. So it's not. Well, so maybe much, that's what happened. Yeah. Because there used to be a lot of different kinds of plants there. Yeah. Kind of covering. I mean, it, it kind of breaks the power of the water as it goes by. Absolutely. Oh, sure. And yeah. it's where the river yeah. goes around. Yeah. It's, it's just, yeah. And they don't lose property here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to do a lot more behind the scenes. And then when we have like a couple of things kind of solidly in place and have been embedded with Jeremy, yeah. that, you know, like the language and the updates, you know, then we'll kind of present and then but it'll be a bit of a plot. You can do a, 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 a riverfront survey somehow, like weighed up, or I don't know how you do it, yeah, and look at what's happening all along the river. Oh, yeah, well, that's not what this particular task is. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be a task. Yeah, um, you know, on the Lake Beach, not Lake Beach, yeah, Lake Beach poisoning or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that might be an opportunity to do what you want to do over there if they have to remove stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, Jer that. Jeremy said something about okay, the, the, the salt water, salt water front, but maybe go easy on the fresh water, like that's more. Delivers are more. I don't know. He, he sounded like sure they're, they're just separate. They're, they're, they're both shoreline, but one's a coastal and one's river, and that talked about coastal. Yeah, right. So, and then there is also the 
um, like the watershed group that has some jurisdiction too. Mm -hmm. So me, they could be doing it too. Because um, it's part of that. I mean, don't they have? Isn't there somebody who um, is it the, the town or is the or is it a combination of the town and and the watershed have somebody who rides in a boat along the river and stuff? Yeah, that's this. That's the position. Uh, that's a seasonal yeah. position. Like, or, but maybe yeah. when he's out cruising around, he could photograph some of these things to document them. I'm but he's not, not busy. I know you're not. Yeah, I know you're yeah, not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could maybe be combined into his role when he's not. Doing other. I have to kind of stay a little bit like away from them. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I would pick you up at the dams and yeah. there, mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of issues with, with them and the dams because they want the water levels for different reasons. Well, because he wants the high and she wants low. Right. right. We're at the exact same time. Yeah. And everyone's pissed because it's not high or low. Yeah. Exactly the same. Or the extremes when it's flooding or it's too dry. You know, because yeah. they can't take their walk their flings out or all that kind of stuff. But, but they do do some good stuff too with the, the environmental monitoring. Yeah, water quality and testing or yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so I didn't send out the um our existing action items list and um do you? I sent them at the beginning of last month. I mean, uh, uh, or with the me. minutes. Yeah, or just last. Okay, I didn't attach it to this particular. My I didn't print. Is there anything that you want to highlight, Bob? That, um, like, that we might have missed. Go back. <laughs> um, Is there a written mis mission statement for this committee? There Without is, boundaries, actually. what we're expecting. I think it's right um, in the um, on the minute. I mean, in the website under the so well uh, one of the things we we're supposed to be doing was um we we're supposed to be contacting owners of the potential trees and making sure it's more green circles and acts they need 30 more so we should really try to make some dent in that and then you're you were going to coordinate the details of the tree city in celebration uh semantic work done the paperwork which is doing um heritage tree map brian and i have started working on that and that's other things besides your ordering signs. All right. Well, it sounds like we've coordinated a two option for location with Pearl Street potentially being a higher or easier. Well, I just that, was, that, that was already yeah. a green circle. Yeah. So we're, we're supposed to go into the app and places where there are no green circle, which would be going places where there's already potential trees and contact the owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really good. And 30, so 30 more need to be done, and it's April. And we want to get them done in the next two months, and we should try to. To be it up. Yeah, there's 30 more circles in city one. Oh. Uh, 30, 30 more are needed is what you said last month. So one of the things that I haven't done yet is I have a leftover inventory of trees. Okay. But I would have to order a few more trees. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe think about, I mean, I can just pick them out or you can pick them out. But maybe like a couple of the story. I mean, I, I can use the same list I've been working off of. But what I found is that I can buy these trees throughout the year at different locations mm -hmm. for a lot less money. Oh, and yeah. then, then buying them all out from from mm -hmm. yeah. you get I mean I like buying some from him, but <laughs> but I think I can go like like Guinea Ridge and Loads of Home Depot, and I get enough for like ten, twelve dollars. And sometimes they're, they're sixty dollars. You know, mm -hmm. I can see, I can buy six trees for the price. Because they want to move trees, right? Kind of big, and they don't want to bother us. So right. They come along, take them off, and right. right. And I can just go if pick. If you know them. what you're doing, which you really do, right? Know, you can just do it. That's what I think yeah. is the best thing. That's for me. fine. Yeah, I'm I just want to be money. I did do that last year, so I ended up with a lot more trees. I didn't spend as much. Money. And and I mean, I always was afraid of. Big trees because I was afraid you wouldn't get enough water. But you got a water system, so and you got a really nice place to put them to, sh to store them. So, yeah, it's a good deal. All so, right, so other, just go with that. yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah. Um, so, are there any other items other than that I would like to mention that um, 
Deer and Bergdahl from the Maine Forest Service will be coming in at three here. My hope was that there would be more of us in attendance. We've got people sick and moving in different moving parts and we'd um, sort of be able to attend. But um, here we're talking about beech leaf disease and um, sort of its its or its best known or you know origins and, and transmission and, and potential treatments, et cetera. And he'll it'll be about an hour. Is this that new beach disease and that they're worried about wiping off? Well, and is this is it is it like is it a fungus or is it a insect? I the last I read on, uh, in the research, and I am not a mm -hmm. forest entomologist or that by any means. I mean, Aaron, this is why Aaron's coming. Mm -hmm. um, but the last I had read is that there was a strong suspicion that a nematode was causing a nematode the oh. problem. I don't know if the research is still if that's still like a, you know that's what they're leading I into think. or they know for sure that that is what it is uh, but Very they cool. had suspected um, that it was a nematode and um and they are finding um i do know that there's um a fertilizer treatment that that is that's helping to regulate the ph that seems to be you know like especially if you've got like one in your yard or yeah. you know a row of them the street's not necessarily going to work in every you know in a large forested right. situation per se but like um but that using this um this uh readily available fertilizer application in a particular you know ratio um shifted the ph enough or gave a little bit of a you know like taking a boost of vitamins if you will like and gave the tree enough of a little bit of a zhuzh and so he'll talk about all of that and a whole lot more than I don't um so know next about. month's meeting no, it's this right. afternoon at three hey, yeah could, can you I was going to go I was going to try to watch during zoom because you kind of sure yeah showing up and I don't know what the link is it's our link it's our it's it's, it's the conservation commission link yeah, and I'm what I'm gonna do is actually just mute and stop the video. Let's kind of leave us on hold and then reboot us just so oh, we'll yeah. um so we'll be off. But so this is just um, and uh, yeah, so he'll be in. But if that and otherwise I've we've worked our way nicely through the meeting in advance of two thirty. Well, good job guys. We're gonna half our, our crew here so we're what about, what three less voices. Beaches? Like conference, yeah, I'll ask that question, but yeah. Yeah, to call Was there a release in this area for something to take care of the hemlock um, yes. problem? Yes. Yeah. That was hap that's happened. Yeah. And there's uh, been any studies on how it's working yet? They'll come back. They just released it last, last year? year. In the spring? Last spring? Or the, the, was it the year before? They're all in the blue. I think it was last spring. But um, also, I think it would be really good to. Do an income info like a little information whole things on like the gap and in the newspapers or whatever, you know, or even on a website. How do you identify if you have a beach tree? I mean, people just don't know. I mean, like I know my exact property doesn't have to be right really right next to a big part of the state park, which I which has a ton. Uh, I know, but I don't really know how to tell them apart exactly unless it's one of the easier ones. Well, there's, there's nothing on the leaves right now, so I mean the, okay. I mean, the, the the, the actual oh, even the tree trunk the tree trunk really tree trunks, right. distinctive. Is, well, they they tell you, know that. Yeah, they, they tell you that's not the best way to identify a tree, but that that one tree you really can kind of tell. Well, Beach trees hold their leaves most of the winter. They're very dry. Oh really? The uh, beech yeah. trees in this state are mostly sick, and they've been ignored by the forestry department oh. because they weren't interesting to anybody economically. And they're so threatened, not originally, not by the leaf thing that you're talking about, but this other blister yeah, thing, blister. which is two organisms. And they're so, they're in so much trouble now that they're starting a new invasive behavior. And I don't know what the forestry people think of that, but it seems to me they're probably going to tell them, you know, talk about weeds. They're going to decide that the beech trees are weeds. No, I don't say that. Beach trees are like the best tree in the They're forest. beautiful, but they've been yeah. really sick. And the, and the like forestry the, people. Isn't there a copper beach up on Washington Street, the biggest beach? And like, you know what you want to talk well, about? Well, yes, but they won't put it up as a specimen, you know, the winning beach, because 
And it's, it's, it's a cost there. Yeah, it's yeah. about to be You know what I'm talking about? The tree, where is it? The it's east. right down the Where Dave Marstella used to live? It'd be 52. You got to look at this tree. It's 50, maybe. Right maybe. It's number 60. Tree. I don't know. I can't remember. It's the big yellow one. Do you know Dave Marstella? It's a beach tree, and it's got to be. It's a copper beach, European copper, copper beach. beach. You want a little beach? Where is this on? It's right near her house. Uh, it's it's down, down. Well, if if you cross all the, you know, where all the yeah. Ryan lives, okay, you go two, three houses between the second house and the third house. It's a yellow it's house. Enormous thing in the driveway. I mean, it's, it's the yellow, yellow house with the big, the big yellow Victorian. Yeah, I've been. That's an amazing tree. Yeah. It, it, it's a little unhappy. I told the guy about the, the leaf thing, and he said he would call somebody and get it looked into. He really cares about the tree. I mean, it's between two properties, but yeah. the Yellow House guy. Yeah, yeah. Jim. Yeah. Jim's Jim's yeah. They like to kind of live next to each other, too. They're kind of like calling. They like being in a Well, call. that's the, yeah. partly the sending out the boots right. and putting up babies. Right. Because I don't know whether the young ones are actually doing seeds, so they have not been producing mast for the wildlife for some time. Mm -hmm. You know, swept to the oaks. They have like really nice beech nuts there. You yeah. ever see that? That's sweet. They're like a little nut, and it's got a little, a little picky, it's picky on the outside of the husk. Yeah. It's about this big around. Deer you know, bottle. And grouse and animals really like Yeah, they used to be really important for pigs, too. Pigs. All right. Yeah, they used to run pigs in the forest. Sure. Um, well, the beach conversation will continue, Sorry. but three, I think, <laughs> I think in the interest of <laughs> other people else's time and, and whatnot. Um, is there anything else Conservation Commission related or um, that should be brought up or have we worked our way through the agenda for today? So we're gonna make it up to people who want to go look for these leaks on there. Yes. I'll send out I'll send out an email and wait Which I'll we'll propose it. maybe day yeah. or time. And then if you guys find the big the big the big <laughs> the big dust or something, <laughs> okay. you're gonna get a award. An award? Oh, this, is, this is I mean it's not one place, it's so many places. And we this is a this is a job that is is so large and back into yeah. it's in the fall and it's it's on the yeah. Well, the new guy you had last month, is he going to talk about that? Yeah, he, yeah. He was, he, he's amazing. He does. Right. He's, he, he, he's done a lot of the same work in South Portland. He presented last night, if you want to listen to him, he did a great job. Oh, it's on the end of that thing? Yeah, right. he, he, he's, he knows his stuff. He's, okay. he's a great resource. Excellent. Well, I appreciate everybody's time today, and um, I hope the, a few of you at least can stay or will come back. It's well, I will be watching for right and watch exactly. Yeah. Um, and I did just yeah. tell Kenny from that you know, house I'm sorry, I can't go back to work. I totally understand. But, but <laughs> can we try to all oh, life see? All right, maybe I'm gonna sign up. Thanks, Stephanie, for joining to us today, to get... and uh, we'll be in touch. Um, um, I'm officially adjourning the meeting, and if I can use this, but if you just